Okay. Right. We're recording. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's bring Improvement Services Committee to order. Let it be recorded. Johnson Nicholson, Burnett are present. Where he is excused. Need a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Motion by Johnson, second by Burnett. Under discussion here, none. All in favor? Aye. Nays, motion carried. Motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion by Burnett, second by Johnson. Under discussion. Here, none. All in favor? Aye. Nays, motion carried. Number one. Consideration possible action on the request by Richard Monfiles to rescind special charges $58.30 at 2931 Beth Drive, Director Grenier. Uh, received a request from uh, Mr. Monfiles on July 24th. He's asking that the charge be waived. There was a, I believe there was a sofa that was uh, collected from in, in front of his building. He said he spoke to both of his tenants multiple times and both insist that oh, it was yard waste that was at the curb on Zealous Drive was not theirs based on his experience with the renters he believes them. They also, both renters know that there's only a spring and a fall collection. He's never had an issue. Um, what we've got is yard waste in the curb line directly in front of the, the property. And according to Mr. Monfiles, somebody else from a different location came and dropped this off in front of this residence. He does have one prior. Uh, so because of the prior, we are not able to address that at a staff level. So we're bringing it before the committee today. When was the last prior? Uh, prior was... Within the year? <coughs> 2012. How do you determine the, the cost or something like that? It's based on a minimum collection charge when we, uh, probably in November, mm -hmm. October or November, we'll be bringing forward our annual service charges mm -hmm. and it falls within the service charge guidelines. And the minimum charge is basically 15 minutes of truck and employee. It's all labor, right? Based on labor, labor. A little, a little bit of truck usage. Right. Okay. And that's it? What's in the picture? See, that was it. Yes. Like, from the public's perspective, I could see how they would say that would take no more than you know five minutes for someone to come by. So you could see, not looking at the totality of a budget, correct? Understanding all the costs involved. Yeah, I think ours is based. I don't know if it's fifteen or twenty minutes. Might be twenty. How you mentioned it. twenty. I think it's twenty minutes, and 15. that's supposed to include round trip travel time plus time spent on site. Yeah. I mean, there's mobilization too. It's mm -hmm. Yeah. Get the equipment on the truck and people in the yeah. truck. And, yeah. I, I would move to deny. Second. Okay. There's a motion by Johnson to deny. Second by Alderman Burnett. Under discussion. Hear none. All Aye. in favor? Aye. Nays. Motion carried. Consider. Okay. Number two. Consideration. Possible action. On request with Pete's Annex LLC to enter in an agreement for parking division to manage and enforce. Parking in the BMO Harris Bank Building parking lot located in the blocks around by Broadway, West Walnut, Hubbard, and Pearl Street, Lot BW. Director Gunier. We have provided you tonight. We did not have it ready for inclusion in the packet electronically, so we've given you a hard copy of a draft parking agreement uh, between the city and Pete Annex through their agent, AMD Realty LLC. Uh, what we'd be looking for is approval uh, subject to some administrative revision. Uh, one of the things that we are still working on with Pete's Garage is uh, whether or not it's going to be Pete's Garage that signs the agreement or the property manager, a &D Realty. So those kind of minor uh, revisions are still necessary in here. But essentially on the corner of Walnut and North Broadway, uh, going back years and years, the old Valley Bank, the BMO Harris property, Pete's Annex has purchased that property and there's a large amount of surface parking. They approached us uh, several months ago and said, you know, you guys deal with parking on a regular basis. We'd like to own the lot, but we'd like you to manage it for us. So what we're working on uh, are the terms in here whereby uh, we would put uh, signs and pavement marking in there. We take care of sweeping in the non-winter winter months. 
general landscaping, lawn cutting around, directly around there, snow plowing and removal within the lot, parking enforcement, and then rental parking administration. So we would have the ability to sublet within that lot, and I think what we're looking at is a combination of parking arrangements within the lot itself. They do have tenants. Uh, BMO still maintains presence in there, so we would be providing on-premises uh, on parking for their tenants. We'd have a combination of some rental spots Correct. and then some metered spots. Mm -hmm. And then we'll work out the, do you have some draft language in there about the cost share or? Uh, we worked out uh, actual costs based on our best um, guess of realistic dollars. And, and it is, there's a clause there that says for the first year it would be $20,000. To, to manage it. Now they stand to uh, have a gross revenue of more than double of that. So city's not looking to make money necessarily oh, on this. We're looking to make sure our costs are covered and we reserve the right to renegotiate the terms and conditions to make sure that our costs are covered. Uh, but this is simply to help. We, we know parking and this gives us the ability to help foster a cooperative uh, arrangement where parking is very uh, in demand. You know, up and down Broadway, I think that, that holds true. And with a large surface lot like this, rather than have one person control the lot, and I'm not saying Pete's Annex is a bad a bad landlord for, for parking, not, not in any way, shape, or form. They don't know parking at all. And we could wind up with a property owner in here who kind of holds that all captive and holds all the businesses rent for ransom. Whereas Pizza simply said, Green Bay, you guys know parking. We'd like you to administer the lot on our behalf, and whatever money we make, we make. Well, Steve, how come, how come we're, how come we don't try to make something, some revenue, besides just covering cost? Why, why wouldn't we try to make some money? I suppose we could. Okay. Uh, it's just that that's typically not the way we've right. we've operated parking. Well, I know, but I mean, I guess I I don't see it that way. I would see that because we could use some extra money, couldn't we? Yeah, and because parking is a special revenue fund, anything that we would make would go directly right. to the that parking fund. Right. right. I, I I like to hear from the committee members, but I'd like to enter some negotiations where we make something. Go ahead, Mr. Just, Johnson. So so I mean, I'm the one that actually told Pete to uh, to come talk to Director Grenier about this, um, simply because with their, their acquisition of that building, when BMO Harris owned that building, uh, they were very lax with the parking lot and kind of just let it be used uh, by anybody really without any enforcement. Um, with, with this new acquisition, what it did is it kind of created some pain points for parking in the district. And so uh, what we wanted to be able to do was uh, after talking with them and talking with some other tenants in the district to still be able to maintain some level of public access to this lot. Uh, as is pointed out, 118 stalls um, are a lot uh, down in this, this part of my district and, and uh, we wanted to be able to again uh, retain some level of access to that for all the small businesses and some of the restaurants and other, uh, other places that have people coming and going. Um, I, after looking at this and knowing that they have the potential to, to double that um, and that we have risk associated with this, meaning we say that, hey, if we're going to lose in that first year, we reserve the right to renegotiate. Well, I think we probably knowing that we do have some inherent risk and that there is some, you know, obviously labor involved with us trying to manage this, I, I, I would support Andy Nicholson's or uh, Alder Nicholson's comment here about having more or less a management fee um, that kind of ensures some safeguard there. Uh, the other thing I would just point out is, is Director Grenier, your comment about trying to determine if it's A and D or Pete's Annex, um, I would I would encourage us to do it with the owner, only because my, my concern would be if if Pete's Annex were to terminate its agreement with A and D for any reason, it could put this agreement in jeopardy. Well, generally speaking, <coughs> we do. Pro uh, there are provisions within the agreement for all successors and assigns. So, okay, I'm less worried about that. But I think it. I agree with you that I think it's more appropriate to have the agreement with the owner, and the owner can have an agent act on his behalf. Okay. Anything else, all the council? No. I go back in. Back when I was younger, I used to go down there quite a bit. 
um, the West Picture Show was kind of a happening place, and I know that but parking was very confusing. You know, you, you, a lot of times you just park there and just assume that it was a private lot. In fact, I used to work at that Emo Harris Bank when it was m &I Bank, and even then as an employee of that bank, I was still confused. So I think there's got to be some benefit to the city to have those public parking spaces available. So on the face of it, I, I kind of agree, but I agree with Alderman Nicholson, there's got to be some sort of profit or additional revenue to the city. I don't know if the city wants again the practice of you know providing services to a for profit business without some revenue to the city because it's our staff that the resources making this happen. So I don't know uh, where do we go from here if we approve this? Is this sort of that weird thing where we approve it and it still goes to the council? Or well, it's yes, it, it'll still go to the council. And if you have a suggestion, <coughs> and I, this is no way an endorsement, but just something for consideration. If you have an endorsement like uh, cover costs and any revenues above and beyond uh, costs incurred. To be split between owner and city at an 80-20 or a 90-10 or whatever kind of a ratio, we would we would definitely go back to the uh, to the owner with that suggestion. Question, Steve: If they went with a different company to do the maintenance or yeah, the maintenance instead of the city, what would they pay roughly? I mean, are, we're going to save them some money, aren't we? I would think we are because with lawn mowing and sweeping maintenance, we're simply going to add that as part of our rotation and pick it up while we're out doing those right. activities. And this would probably be winter maintenance by parking division. Yeah, almost half of the cost is expected winter maintenance cost. Okay. And that's done by a, well, parking division will do the light stones, but the heavy stones parking division contracts out so that that's already passed through. So what kind of margin would you say we could um, make and uh, in, in the meantime still save that, comp that company money? Well, I haven't been involved directly in the, in the negotiations. Uh, Operations Director Pierlot has, so I'm not sure you know, what kind Chris? of appetite uh, they yeah. have. But you got a feel? Yeah, I'm waiting for them to call me back this week and to, uh, to talk a little bit more. They okay. seem very, very amenable to do we price that we propose they didn't even really flinch okay you know a contractor has you know the cost a uh, time material plus a percentage overhead so I mean there's there's typical activity like I that. guess do we have to get this to the council next yeah. week or can we wait until the next meeting we until you, yeah, you it's touch not, base I mean right. is this a I don't, I don't, we're not, I don't know that. I just wanted yeah. to keep it moving. That's we all. we would like to have it done sooner rather than later, but I, I don't think too, it's yeah. going to. I don't think it's going to impact anything negatively okay. if we because no, we can if we have to bring it back to you on the twenty sixth yeah. in two weeks time. Uh, but is there is there some sort of a proposal that you'd like us to go back to offer to the owner? Well, what kind of margin? Well, I, as much as we can get. <laughs> but uh, realistically, I guess uh, we could start at 20%. Okay, so suggest an 80 20 split and see if we can't negotiate that with them? So 20 plus our costs all covered. Costs covered, and then any revenues above and beyond costs would be split 80 20 between 80 to the, to the owner, 20 to the city. This is a little bit of forward territory for us yeah, because we've, we've always done uh, break even. Yeah, right. All the years that I've been, I and I, I know in the past I, I, I basically disagree with pretty much with a lot of that. But I always thought we could try to make something. Um, not necessarily your, the mm -hmm. DPW. I remember talking to Jerry Hansen, his department, sheriff. Sure um, not sheriff, sure police department. But anyway, um, so when you say eighty twenty. So let's say just for sake of discussion, example, please. Uh, for sake of discussion please. purposes, this brings in gross revenues of one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year. Okay. And twenty thousand dollars of that is our actual cost. So that we get paid the twenty for actual cost up front. That leaves one hundred thousand dollars of money that's above and beyond costs. Right. 
that 100,000, 80,000 goes to Pete's garage, 20,000 comes to the city. We'd split any revenue above and beyond costs at an 80-20 split. And I picked the 80-20 because 80-20 and 90-10 have been two of the numbers we've used on paygo tips quite a bit. So those numbers kind of mm -hmm. pop into my head right away. Real a start. Yeah. And realistically, just an FYI, oh, my projected uh, revenues, because they haven't started, so you don't know until you experience it, is probably right. going to be a hint over 50,000 gross. So like, under an 80-20 split, we could expect to make about $10,000 a year. I'd be more comfortable with the flat cost kind of cuts down the administrative, trying to figure out what the profit is, the bookkeeping side of their operations, how much tenant pays per, it just seems like a lot. But we're taking that in. We take the money in and give it to them. So we can mm -hmm. just... Yeah, just we're, we're, we're the check. ones who are collecting all the revenue from the lot. <coughs> we do all the work. Okay, okay. So we're already doing the bookkeeping on it anyway. Okay, so yeah. It seems like a reasonable place to start to me. Sure. And, and again, it's... If, if, if we don't manage it, they'll obviously manage it on their own, and, and then we have potentially restricted or no access for public parking, and that would be my greater concern. Right, I agree. And so if, to your point, if we can get 20% and then yeah. use that almost as a benchmark or a standard as we start to renegotiate some of these other contracts. Yeah, we'd be happy to go back and Let's try it. Okay. Uh, what, what are you looking for for a motion then? Uh, I think to hold for two weeks and direct staff to uh, continue negotiations with a starting with a proposal of costs covered and excess revenues split at 80 20. You want to make that a uh, motion? I'm a Johnson. Second. Alderman Johnson made the motion, seconded by Burnett. Under discussion here, none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number three, consideration of possible action. Right, on Broadway Inc. and Green Bay Metro Transit for a public trash can at the bus stop on the southwest corner of Dousman Street and Chestnut Avenue. Director Gunnar. Uh, I'm going to have Chris Beerlot take this one. Chris? Yeah, I uh, spoke with uh, Brian who had uh, taken in some uh, comments, suggestions from constituents, uh, residents in the area. I talked with a transit director uh, at Kiewitz. She was not opposed to that idea whatsoever. We do, Public Works does this for a living. We, we put yeah. out public trash cans and yeah. collect them. And if it's if it's a ne necessary, yeah, it helps keep the area clean. Absolutely. It's a, it's a very uh, popular bus stop. It, okay. You know, recent shelter, so people do congregate. Right. It's a subway, right? Is that where that's Yeah, right by the okay. subway. Yeah. Essentially, they put a new bus stop and it's creating a lot of trash. You yeah. know, a place mm -hmm. to go with that, sure. Entertain a motion. Move to approve. Motion by Burnett, second by Johnson. Under discussion, hear none. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Nays motion carried. Cons number four, consideration of possible action request by Green Bay Metro Transit to place trash cans at the new transfer station in the 2200 block of Main Street and have the Department of Public Works add that stop to its collection route. We put a transit hub over on the far east side off of the access road near Auto Plaza Way in Main Street on the south side of Main. So kind of in front of where the new... Like uh, Taco Bell in there? Yeah. Okay. Pizza Ranch, Taco Bell. Or All right. Yeah, Pizza Ranch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. And because it's a it's a hub, you no longer have to come down to the transit station to switch buses. You can get off one bus at that hub and pick another bus up. So it, it's kind of like a mini transit uh, location. Those are awful busy and they do wind up generating a lot of traffic. People get on and off the bus, they've got stuff they want to throw away and they become a litter collection point. So rather than have the area look bad, uh, Metro Transit and DPW agree that trash cans should probably be located here. They'll, they're going to fund the can? Yes. So they'll buy the can, we'll take care of dumping it. Questions, if not, entertain a motion. Move to approve. Motion to approve by Burnett, second by Johnson, under discussion. You're not all in favor, nays most carried. Five, consideration of possible action and request by the League of Wisconsin Municipalities to adopt the Strategic Transportation Aid Resolution. Director Grenier. Uh, included in the packet electronically that we submitted to you is a draft resolution uh, that the Wisconsin, or League of Wisconsin Municipalities has created uh, that they are looking to have 
cities uh, across the across the state uh, adopt. So I'm trying to. I apologize. I don't have a hard copy of the. Take your time. Yeah, so the, the resolution says, as part of the Just Fix It campaign in partnership with the League of Wisconsin Municipalities, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Towns Association, and the Transportation Development Association of Wisconsin, whereas local government of Wisconsin is responsible for about 90% of the road miles in the state, and whereas Wisconsin's diverse economy is dependent upon county and town roads, as well as city and village streets and transit systems across the state, and whereas the city of Green Bay and other local governments across Wisconsin have been highlighting our unmet transportation needs in many different avenues, including events such as the historic turnout for transportation event in September 2016, where local governments in every region of the state held simultaneous meetings calling on the state legislature to prioritize transportation and pass a sustainable funding package, and whereas the increase in transportation funding for locals in the last budget was certainly appreciated, many are still aren't still aren't back to 2011 levels when you adjust for inflation. And whereas locals, including the city of Green Bay, continue to struggle to meet even the most basic maintenance needs for our transportation system. And whereas states surrounding Wisconsin and across the country have stepped up with sustainable funding plans for their state and local roads. And whereas Wisconsin will be at a competitive disadvantage if it does not implement a revenue and spending plan that addresses both our interstates that were built in the 1950s and 60s and our local and state roads, and whereas levy limits do not allow local government to make up for the deterioration of state funding, and whereas local governments would not be forced to turn to local wheel taxes or increased borrowing or exceeding their levy limits if the state would finally pass a sustainable funding plan for transportation. Whereas the city of Green Bay, the Common Council of the City of Green Bay recognizes that our state and highway interstate system is the backbone of our surface transportation system and plays a vital role in the economy of Wisconsin. Both state and local roads need to be properly maintained in order for our economy to grow. And whereas from a competitive standpoint, Wisconsin motorists pay significantly less than any of our neighbors when you combine the annual cost of state gas tax and vehicle registration fees. Now therefore, be it resolved by the Common Council of the City of Green Bay, urges the governor, and legislature to just fix it and agree on a sustainable solution, one that includes a responsible level of bonding and adjusts our user fees to adequately and sustainably fund Wisconsin's transportation system. Furthermore, the City Council directs the clerk to send a copy of this resolution to our state legislators, Governor Scott Walker, and the League of Wisconsin Municipalities. So it's, it's a resolution on behalf of the Common Council urging the state to provide a sustainable funding model to increase state funding on local roads. Any questions for our director? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, what can I comment? Yeah, I mean, yeah. All of them in Burnett. We have these resolutions that come up all the time, county, cities. I mean, is it going to matter? Uh, I think this one will. Uh, when they referenced the, the meeting that was held in September of 2016, that was held in approximately 80 locations across the state, and it was a live stream meeting that was held. And that generated a lot of a lot of interest, a lot of comment back from the legislators. Now, that was a first meeting, and it was the beginning of the Just Fix It campaign. But not a lot's really been done actively since then. There's been a lot of talk and a lot of studies and things like that. This is the first real significant outreach from uh, from a coalition of those folks who created the Just Fix It uh, program to actually call on the governor and, and the state legislators uh, to come up with a sustainable funding plan. So I agree with you. I think there are a lot of these resolutions that kind of, it's a feel-good kind of thing. And uh, But this one, I think, actually may have some likes to it. Is this in, I saw a recent situation come up where some federal funding is missing, is this we'll talk it? No, this is completely separate from that. We'll be talking about that on a director's report. Okay. Would it, would it be accurate in here, it says that, you know, some communities haven't restored funding levels to 2011, would that be accurate for the city of Green Bay? 
I, what they're getting at is the, I think what, what we're talking about is the state road aids mm -hmm. have not been restored back to, back to 2011 levels, and I'm, I'm not sure exactly where we sit on that. Okay. 2011 for Gates, uh, my time looking at those kinds of things, but we could definitely look into that. For I'm you. just curious. I mean, it doesn't say that that's the case with Green Bay. It just says some communities or many communities. Right. So. I'm, I'm with you, Jess. I mean, I mean, a lot of these are feel-good things, but I don't think this does anything that hurts us. I mean, everything in here is accurate, you know. And, and that, that's one of the things that we looked at before we even brought it to you. If it was something that was antagonistic or right. controversial or uh, confrontational, then I wouldn't have supported it. But this simply says we, as the Common Council, encourage you to do something come up with a sustainable road formula uh, and help the locals fund their projects. The only thing, the only thing, and this might be a philosophical sure. issue that I have, is that say if City A has done a great job in funding roads and they budget and they're growing and it's an attractive place to live, and Community B perhaps also equally attract the place to live, but they have neglected their roads. Why should municipality A, through the tax, uh, state taxes, pay for municipality B's neglect? Mm -hmm. That's that's philosophically where I struggle. Sure. So, but yeah, we can. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve. Motion to approve by Burnett, second, second by that. Johnson. Under discussion. I think I'll double. Kathy. Um, I, I approve of this because. Um, you can see all the different associations too. It's not just you know the city itself putting it forward. You're joining all these other groups and all these other cities that, that are putting these same resolutions in, and it's showing our state that there's you know they need help. You're collecting money coming in. You need to bring some back to the communities, share it out so that we can help with some of these road projects, and. This also, being on the county board, is a big push for maybe that South Bridge too. They're not, you know, how many years has that been been asking for that South Bridge in you know, the county? So this, I think, is a good resolution to start saying, "Come on, we got to do something. Just fix it." That's what it says. Okay. Any other concerns? All in favor? Aye. Nays, motion carried six. Consideration of possible action and request by Carrie Rathburn. Doing business at Star Electric to install and maintain groundwater monitoring. Well, in public, right away, Director Kinnear. And again, here what we've got is, uh, I believe this one's up off of Belt Avenue. Um, we have a known underground storage tank or known environmental release that occurred up there and the contamination has migrated into the public right of way. The Department of Natural Resources as part of their process requires uh, any potentially responsible party to define the degree and extent of contamination whether that crosses property lines or not. So uh, Star Electric who is the responsible party in this case as approach the city, they would like to put a monitoring well in our right of way and determine degree and extent of contamination should that exist. Uh, this is a normal course of business. We encounter these quite often. Um, there is a whole harmless agreement that goes along with this. The petitioner is then responsible for all costs associated with installation of the well, uh, all the sampling that goes along with that well, and then proper abandonment. Uh, and then filing all of the required reports with the Department of Natural Resources after the well is no longer needed. Uh, because it occurs in the right of way, it doesn't make us a potentially responsible party. We incur no liability nor additional costs associated with this, except if we happen to be doing a utility contract or a street contract and we happen to encounter those contaminated uh, soils or groundwater, should they exist, uh, we're responsible for those disposal costs, but that happens whether they have this well or not. Okay, questions or concerns? Move to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Burnett, second by Johnson or discussion. If you're not all in favor, nay, right. motion carried. Seven. Consideration of possible action on a review and award of bids for rubber surfacing for the downtown pocket park project. 
Director Kinnear. Okay, the pocket park uh, is the one that's going in along Adam, North Adams Street uh, on the Bay Lake City Center project or property. Uh, if you remember, we had this out for bid. Uh, it came in significantly overpriced. Uh, so we've re uh, the Parks Department has rescoped this. They're doing a lot of the work with in-house staff. Uh, but one of the things we do have to bid out is the rubberized surface. So that was turned over to the purchasing department. Purchasing department went out. Uh, there were two quotes that were submitted back. The first is uh, from the, the low responsive vendor is Northland Recreation LLC. Uh, total cost is $31,743 plus a $4,899 option that due to the steep nature recommendation that the top coat be increased from a 3 8 inch thickness to a 1 half inch thickness. Uh, so total cost of this uh, purchase would be $36,642 and this does carry a, uh, an approval by Parks Department. They are they're good with this uh, this award. Any questions or concerns? If not, I'll entertain a motion. We move to approve with the recommendation of half inch thick. Rubber? Yeah, yeah the, the, coat, the half inch thick yeah. coating. Yeah. Motion by Johnson to approve. A second. Mm -hmm. Second by Burnett under discussion. Nothing. All in favor? Nays motion okay. carried. Eight. Consideration of possible action and request by Alderman Lefebvre to extend special assessment payments, special assessment payments for <coughs> pavement construction from five years to ten years when requested by residents. Kathy? Yeah, this is uh, for the, especially for the, uh, for my district, the street, Smith Street and, um, St. George, they they could not be put off till next year to take advantage of the meal tax because they tie in specifically the sewer system right into the um, Webster Street project. So they had to go through this year. And as there would not be money to exempt them from those special assessments or from it'd be hard with the meal tax to you know, take them off. So one person especially especially asked me, could they extend the payments out? And I talked to Steve and he, uh, he agreed that um, that would not be a hardship, right, if some of the people did ask for that. Am I got that right, Steve? Correct. Uh, this really would only apply to those pavement contract or those pavement projects that are in the current 2018 year. Mm -hmm. Anyone who had a project prior to this either has paid their assessment in full or is already on a payment plan. So it would be difficult for us uh, to go back and redo that. So it's really only those 2018 projects that kind of got caught in the middle uh, when, when the wheel tax was being discussed. It's a little bit of a, um, of a cash flow. It, it really boils down to a cash flow question for us. And given the fact that the project was substantially smaller this year, or the, the program was smaller this year than it has been in, in prior years, uh, we would be able to handle that cash flow up front. Uh, when we build the capital improvement program, we're counting on getting those revenues in. Uh, we simply need to carry that as a 10-year, uh, if requested, we'll carry it as a 10-year uh, accounts payable as opposed to a five-year. But again, because the program was smaller this year, uh, what what could have been a little, you know, kind of a significant hit for us, I think, is manageable. So we would we would be okay with this. Any questions or concerns, Johnson? Uh, how many how many assessments are there in 2018? Oh, geez, offhand, be eligible for this. Offhand, I don't know. Um, 100, 200. I we're less than 200. Okay, and is it um, is five year the default? I yes. mean, up front or five oh, years at, at this rate. Okay. And so would we notify those individuals that they have a tenure option or would they have to know to come to us? I guess we would leave that at your, at your pleasure if you would wish us to. We have the mailing lists from everybody that we sent out because we had to notify them of 
the public hearing, the assessment hearings. So it wouldn't be a very big deal for us to go back and say Common Council has taken this action should you desire to exercise that option that's available to you. And do they pay the same rate, that, that interest rate to cover the bond expense, if I recall correctly, is that the same for 10 years versus five? Yes, it would be because you're paying the asset or you're paying the interest rate based on the bonding rate that we took out. Okay. So once you once we establish that rate for that payment schedule, that rate or that interest rate stays effective. As a matter of fact, what we do is we finance department computes what the total cost would be similar to what you do on a mortgage. They know the interest rate, they compute the 10 payments, and then divide it equally by 10 and that calculate into what your annual number would be. Isn't this something we already do, 10 years? I mean, by special request? Only for commercial, or commercial. other than residential. This would, this would make this available. And because commercials, um, they pay a higher rate than the residential assessments do, and a lot sure. of times you wind up with small businesses that don't have the wherewithal to pay that assessment within that five-year period. We have historically allowed them to go on a 10-year plan. Thank you. Kathy? And also, there will be people that will pay it in full. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. so you're not going to be doing that. And some people will want to just take five years instead of 10 years. So you're not probably going to have a, all of them say, well, we want to do it 10 years. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes what we find out is once they find out that there is interest associated with it, they tend not to want to pay that 10-year plan. Mm -hmm. Member Day? I'm fine with it. I think it reduces the sting for folks who have to pay a special assessment the same year we establish a little tax. So I don't know if the appropriate motion would just a simple move to approve. Yes. Public works will mm -hmm. figure out the motion. To the there's a motion to approve by Burnett, second by Second. Johnson under discussion. You're not all in favor. Aye. Aye. motion carried. Nine, consideration of possible action and a request by Alderman Worry to review how sidewalk replacements are funded. Can we hold this up until Mr. Worry's at our next meeting? Absolutely. Hold to hold. Second. Motion to hold by Burnett, second by Johnson. Our discussion here, none all in favor? Aye. Nays motion carried. Ten, consideration of possible action and a request by Department of Public Works on um, proposed 2019 Parking Division Rates and Fees Report. Director Gnier. Uh We have provided you tonight with a hard copy of uh, this year's proposal for 2019 parking division rates and fees, and I am going to have Chris Pierlot give you the overview on what we are talking about. Uh, basically, you know, we do, do the rate analysis versus uh, upcoming proposed uh, operating budget for, for the uh, upcoming year every year every late summer August June June through August uh, and then we come up with a proposal because we've got to balance the budget because parking is standalone uh, based on what we saw and and what we have seen in the past we have not increased rental rates uh, for the last two years so and, and obviously we got to keep up with our own expenses because it's parking is standalone not funded by the tax levies so we're proposing to increase rental parking rates by 2%, uh, which is pretty typical maximum. Uh, we would not change any rates that are currently being charged in the Adams Street lot, at parking meters, or in the river ramp. Uh, we would uh, propose to increase parking rates in the ramps from 75 cents per hour to 85 cents per hour, then they would be the same as our parking meter rates. So the park, so park, parking meter rates are already five, but uh, but uh, ramps were behind them. We didn't do anything with ramps for I don't know. I think it's been three or four years. It, uh, there's an attachment. I can tell you exactly how many years. Um, no change in parking citation rates. We adjusted those with a, a couple different ones over the last couple of years. They're pretty consistent at, uh, as to what's happening in the region in the state. Uh, we would continue to accept credit card payments uh, with no extra charge to parking patrons, you know, the parking division just absorbs so the, the, the fees associated, associated with that. There was some discussion up front, and the reason I put that in there to affirm that was there's some discussion and question, should we add that on, that, you know, because that kind of makes parking division go backwards, but believe it or not, and I'm sure you, it's easy to believe, since we started accepting credit, the payments, it seems like there's a little bit more revenue generated. Now, you know, people don't carry change in their cars to pay meters. They 
you know, passport parking, you know, like the apps and then pay their citations online. It's you have less delinquency. It, it, it just works out. So, so the, the fees that we pay minimally, yeah, it, it's far outweighed by by the uh, benefits that we've seen. My car with quarters in. Yeah, <laughs> and just just for clarification, under item one, the rental rates. That's for our long-term or monthly parkers. Right. So that would be at not only at the ramps but also in the surface lots. And surface park that, that we manage. And then the last thing, many many moons ago, when I started with the city, parking was no charge for the first 15 minutes of each hour. Kind of you know, so you park for zero to 15 minutes. Basically, back then, you know, there's a, a mall downtown. The idea was. First 15 minutes, someone goes in, they drop off their kid or their spouse because they're working at JCPenney, circulate back out of the ramp. You don't, have, you, know, you don't want to take your parking fees for that. You're just getting them to the front door. Well, now everything is long-term parking. There's really not a lot of, it's mostly for business, daily parking. And if you're going to say, see a business or a lawyer for an hour or whatever, you, you know, you're gonna pay the hourly fee. So we would like to get rid of that first hour free and go back to that first 15 minutes free. Uh, and that's the way it was up until 2001 when that Green Bay Gold program started, which has now uh, been rescinded or, and, and changed uh, because it, it just it kind of petered out. So that's the last of the proposals is that we go back first 15 minutes, no charge. You know, if someone comes in and says, oh, this ramp is just so too full, I'm going to get confused and lost, gives them a chance to get out without uh, incurring any fees. And we we do actually see people attempting to game the system uh, who will pull into one facility, park there for 45 minutes, go out, move their car into a different zone and try to capitalize on that first hour free. And by yeah. reducing it, that it eliminates some of this shuffling of cards, if you will. Chrissy. No, what it has increased two percent? What what lots? Uh, that would be the long-term parking in uh, the three ma three main main ramps: Pine, Main, and uh, Cherry. That's the you know when you pay a monthly fee. Right. And uh, and then if you have a pay a monthly fee for any surface parking lot, that is that proposal is for increasing two percent. But that we didn't do wrong. anything last year. No, we did not. So that's basically one percent every year. Correct. Right. Okay. I don't know, I think it should be a little more than 2%. That's I my opinion. Probably yeah. is, though, by the time, I mean, because they round up the dime. Right. right. Yeah, and, then, and actually the bottom line, you know, I'm, I'm, it's my responsibility as general manager of the parking division to make sure that it parking stays solvent into the future. And, right, and we look at that, and at the end of the year, assuming everything pans out, and I try to budget conservatively, especially for revenues. You don't want to say, oh, we're going to make a quadrillion dollars, and you only take take in you know, a million or whatever. So there's some conservatism built in, but at the end of the year, if everything go, go, pans out as projected, based on what, what we know, there's still going to be a, a decent amount of money put into the capital reserve for parking. So it's, the parking is not hurting. Well, what about the, par I mean, the parking ramps? I mean, we have debt on that, don't we? And parking does, uh, uh, pay pay back the bonds uh, to the city. The city's paid the bonds and then we paid them back. There is debt retirement that's all built into the operating budget and there's still money being put into capital. Right, but I remember yeah, right, right now there's still some debt service associated with the Cherry Street ramp and I believe within the next one years. to three years, yeah. I can't remember exactly where we are. In there, right? uh, we should, yes, it's a little bit north of 400 $425,000 a year that we're paying off uh, for that and that that debt will fall away then what we'll do with that debt service payment that's currently in the parking budget is that will go into a capital fund to help build up reserves for the next and we've got a ramp coming uh, right. we just ran the numbers with some of the the patrons we've got coming online with Humana moving out, but Imperial moving in. Um, now the Schreiber is, is fully staffed uh, with Associated, with Foxconn coming into the Watermark building, 
uh, with Metro being fully occupied, City Deck Landing being occupied. Um, we are currently operating Main, anytime that there's an activity at the CAC Convention Center, Main is overflowing and we've got spillback into both Pine and Cherry. Um, and that happens, you know, that's a good problem to have. That means KI Convention Center is, is working. Um, our monthly passes at Cherry, well, our daily occupancy, our, our over physical, 600. physical fixed count, we are over 75% occupied in Cherry every day. The Cherry Street stalls, so it would start to close up on the extras, extra space. And we don't have Foxconn in here yet. That's mm -hmm. 200, We're still 250 that. people, plus we got ISG coming on the third floor of the watermark. That's going to be another 50 people looking for parking. We um, still have debt. We got about one to three years worth of debt left. Uh, and again, that's already in our budget. It's right. Yeah. And then once that debt has fallen off, then we will take that debt service payment. We will stockpile that for future needs. But the future needs are a lot more <coughs> imminent than we may think. The proposed 2019 parking budget, with the debt already in the opera as a line item in the operating budget, there's still projected almost 400,000 going into the capital, which is that rainy day savings account. So parking's doing okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, but we can, I think we could do better. I mean, that's my opinion. I'm just looking out for the citizens of Green Bay. Yep. I don't like giveaways. Um, so I'd like to hear the opinion from the committee. I'm going to have to, whenever I go to Appleton or whatever, I don't really notice the parking meter rates or parking ramp rates list. They're crazy amounts of money, like Madison or Chicago or something like that. Where are we at? Regionally, we're on the low end. We're 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 in the zone, but we're toward the low end of say the a median area. Uh, I think Appleton I don't have the data with me, but Appleton, I believe, is I think they're a dollar per hour in the ramps. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And we're at, we're we're proposing going up to eighty five right now. For yeah, 75 I would say you know from my time on the council previously, I've, I've always felt that the parking division was well ran and. You know, obviously are looking on the best interests of everyone involved. I do think we could probably increase it just a little more rather than you know more than what you've already proposed because then <coughs> a year from now you two year, you know we inch it up five cents, ten cents here and rather make one not substantial but a little more than maybe ninety cents you know rather than inching up a little bit each year. Yeah. I, 85 makes the budget solid, and as we put money away, 90, you're not hurting my feelings. It's just, it's, it's more revenue and more money that's going to help, you know, balance all the parking. Coleman Johnson, do you have an opinion? So, I just want to understand how this operates. I mean, the, the parking division is completely self-sustaining. Correct. Right. So, if there is an overflow, does that money stay within the parking division? That's what right. grows the capital fund? Mm -hmm. Yes. And if there's a deficiency, does that come out of the capital fund? Mm -hmm. That comes out of a rainy day fund, yes. Okay. Uh, do you recall the last time that we've seen a deficiency? Has it been a long time? Not in all my ever? years, really. Uh, uh, well, there might have been a couple years in, where we, we cut in. But three, uh, three years ago, we ran in the red. Okay. We're about a three and a half million dollar a year uh, fund, and I think three years ago we ran about three hundred, about ten percent, three hundred fifty thousand dollars, give or take. Okay, so pretty much that capital improvement fund is that predominantly earmarked for, th like that service on parking ramps. Is that the? Uh, no, it has been used for some of that was used for um, to help offset the cost of implementing the automated parks. Uh, parking access and revenue control mm -hmm. system. Uh, we've used that money for lighting improvements. We've used that for physical improvements that are necessary at surface lots and ramps. Okay. So there's not like an imminent need other than, hey, if we have it, we'll spend it. There's not an imminent need, I guess, to increase beyond that because while we say 2% um, in reality, because we round to the next dime, I mean, we're looking at 10 to 15% 
on this increase? Well, and I would say that there, we do have an imminent need. Uh, we will be looking to add another ramp sometime within the next, I'm guessing absolute top end, we're looking five years and we're gonna have, we're gonna need another ramp downtown. Okay, so if there's an imminent need, I guess my question is why aren't we asking for that right now? Other than us saying, hey, let's grab more. I mean, no pun intended, <coughs> I don't necessarily feel comfortable nickel and diming people if we don't have a need for it. Sure, if we've got the revenue, we'll spend it. But I don't necessarily think that should be the approach. If we've got a, a need for it, then I'd be more inclined to support it. But if it's just, let's add a nickel on there just so that we can get more revenue, I don't particularly feel comfortable about that. Yeah, we do the operating budget first, put the operating budget together and say, okay, we need 3.44 million for the to operate parking division for 2019. Then we go back and like, okay, what are the revenue projections gonna be with this year's revenues? And then do some sensitivity analysis in Excel spreadsheets and come up with a proposed palatable, I try to propose palatable rate changes as opposed to, you know, well, 75, let's ask for a dollar 10. You know, it, not big jumps, something that's more uh, you know, easier on the, the, the patron, but it still may, keeps parking division solvent and mm -hmm. helps build the future capital fund for our future needs. And, it, and, and we're doing that at 2%. And again, it, it, I mean, when we talk about nickel and diming, the people we're nickel and diming are probably predominantly the residents of Green Bay uh, who, are, who are paying that fee. Mm -hmm. and, and so if 2% is what's what's needed to keep the budget in balance and more inclined to support the proposal as opposed to, to tacking on an additional fee. I, I guess I disagree. I don't, I guess it's a matter of opinion, nickel and diming. I'm just, we do have a need, don't we? We have a ramp coming in five well, there, years. There, there will be so a ramp there, in the, There's a need out there. The we may as well start planning right. now. It, I mean, I've been in business for a long time. Like. You got to plan Got a plan down the road to see what the heck's going to happen. You need money in case there's a problem with your building or infrastructure. So, I guess I disagree with the comments of Mr. Johnson. I I think we should increase it. So, and I don't. Where does the twenty percent come in? If if we're increasing at two percent, but round it off, round it to twenty, round it to the next. What time. that means is. Uh, let's say a, a monthly rate in a lot or ramp would be fifty dollars. Increase it two percent. That's one dollar. It goes to fifty one. But let's just say the math comes out to fifty one dollars and twenty three cents. Mm -hmm. You round up to fifty one thirty. Yeah, and, and the ten to fifteen percent is definitely more relevant to the meter rate. Not oh, yeah. Okay. The parking I was, stall rate. Okay. okay. I was just, Apologize for the confusion on that. Well, okay. and the the. The meter rates are not changing. The rental rates, the long-term rental rates, are what are going up by 2%. I believe our base rate uh, is around 64.80. That number yeah, is right around there. Okay. Well, would, that's then the Steve, if it was 3%, well, would it be at 90, 90 at six, cents? At, let, if, if my memory is right and our base rate at the ramp is $64.80, right. a 2% rate increase brings us up to 66.096, which would then become 66.10. So if we go 66.1, yeah, I'll come up to 2.02 .02 or .1 divided by 64.8, it comes up to 1. Uh, 1.02006. So I mean it is six thousands over two percent. I guess I'm so confused if you say two percent. Well, it comes out to sixty-six dollars and nine point six cents, so we take that nine point six cents and round it up to ten. At what? Well, at two percent, so it comes out at just a hair over two. It okay. the two percent. Then at three percent, what is that then? Well, if we were to go sixty-four again, assuming this is sixty-four eighty is the right number, number sixty cents. It would go instead of being sixty-six ten, it would be sixty-six seventy-five a month. It would add sixty-five cents per month to a parking pass. 
how, I'm sorry, how many? How many? It, 70 cents, did you say? About 65 cents. 65 cents. Right, per month. And it still helps the city, doesn't it? Again, what we would do is, uh, as Chris indicated, we cover expenses first. And we, we actually start with right. the expense side of the equation, figure out what our expenses for the year are, compare that against our anticipated right. revenue stream, and that's what this represents is us balancing revenues and, uh, right. and expenditures. If there are monies where we have revenues that exceed expenditures, that goes into right. our reserve fund. Well, I don't think that's too much to ask. But Kathy? I think the question I asked that you're talking about another ramp. Are you ever going to be able to have enough by charging to pay the full ramp? No, right? Because no. the cost is so. The, the new right. ramp we are anticipating so. is going to run somewhere we, uh, somewhere around $33 million, not including land acquisition. Right. So, so you, you could put yeah, money aside, you are. But you're never going to be able to charge enough to the people to pay for the next right. round. We, we would hope feasible. to have. So right. You're saying yeah. you want to, you know, get more revenue, but yeah, I want to help hold the. That's fine, the but burden. do you want to have it so high that some people are going to say, "Oh." Like I said, I don't like giveaways. I like to you know, ease park, the burden park, of the public. Four or five blocks away and but park all day and watch. Mr. Burnett, you know, Alderman Burnett. I don't know. I Nothing. Well, I need a motion. Well, I'll make a motion to increase at three percent. To approve with the increase of three percent. Right. I'll second that. Okay, there's a motion by Nicholson, second by Burnett. We're under discussion. Any concerns or questions? Comments? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Nays? Nay. One nay. Mr. Johnson. Okay, moving forward. Number 11, consideration of possible action and request by the Department of Public Works on proposed 2018-2019 winter contractor rates report. Director Kinnear. Each year we contract with local contractors uh, to help supplement our winter maintenance snow removal activities. Um, we do use the WSDOT Bureau of Highway Maintenance Manual uh, classified equipment rates as a baseline. Uh, for which to help set our rental rates. Uh, so what we're looking at is the state equipment rates plus a cost of $22 per hour for the operator and then we round up or round to the nearest half dollar. So what we have is a, gro a greater or a loader with a wing and the operator we're holding steady at $105 per hour. Uh, a small loader and operator so something that has less than three cubic yard capacity. Uh, last year we were at $68.50. We are proposing to go up to $82 per hour for that. A large loader, again, both of these lo loaders uh, assume no wing, just a plow blade or a bucket. Uh, so a larger loader with an operator, no wing, greater than or equal to three cubic yards, goes from $83.50 to $88.50 per hour and then the hourly rate just for the operator to attend safety meetings or required meetings with staff goes from 20 to $22 an hour. Um, the research that we've completed actually indicates that the greater or loader with a wing, uh, the rate should actually be going down this year based on state equipment rates. However, uh, those are valuable pieces of equipment and uh, we have a tough time getting people at the 105 rate uh, to start with, I would recommend not decreasing that cost because those graders and loaders become invaluable uh, during the winter. That's the only thing that we have that's able to generate down pressure for scraping. Uh, and loaders and graders really do a number. They, they move a lot of snow on our streets. Okay. Any questions or concerns? If not, entertain a motion. Move to approve. Motion to approve by Burnett. Second by Second. Johnson. Any discussion? If you're not all in favor, Aye. these will carry 12. Consideration of possible action on a request by Department of Public Works to reimburse Greenwood Hospitality $30,000 for repairs to the Pine Street Ramp Skywalk in accordance with the previous or the provisions of the Hotel Northland Developers Agreement. Director Grenier. When we entered into the Developers Agreement with Hotel Northland, uh, one of the provisions in that was to provide 
parking services, and then there is a skywalk from our third level uh, that connects to the second floor of the hotel that goes back to the days of um, Port Plaza Towers when that was an assisted living facility, and they needed the ability uh, to get people from the ramp into the facility without bringing them outside. Uh, obviously the front door is not ADA accessible, so bringing them in at the second floor and getting access to an elevator is how they did that. Um, as part of that developer's agreement with the hotel, uh, there was a provision in there that says that we are required to bring that back up to a current condition because it has been left largely vacant since uh, Port Plaza Towers has been empty. What we have come to, what we are working through as part of this development agreement. Now, in order to get that back into a usable condition, we went out and we talked to the contractor who's already over there. Uh, that way we don't have mobilization costs and things of that nature. Uh, we did get a quote from uh, from Ganther, which we've included as, uh, as part of the electronic packet. Uh, approximately $30,000 is 29000 and change, like 29400 I, I believe, um, for them to complete the work while they're over there. One of the things we are trying to do, that's our responsibility either way. Okay, so because that was not a, an expense that we identified in the capital improvement program, uh, we do need to get approval from the Common Council to expend that money. What I can tell you is as part of negotiations with the new owners and Greenwood Hospitality, what we are attempting to do is uh, inform them that with this expenditure we have made that ramp current and we would like, the only reason that that Skyway exists is to get people in and out of the hotel. The, the, the ramp functions perfectly fine without it. So if you folks would like to keep that Skyway, we're going to make this investment we said we would, and then we're going to turn it over. We're actually going to quit claim it over to the developer. It's going to be his responsibility from this point on. But again, this was an expense that was in the approved developer's agreement. Uh, it does exceed 25000 so we do need your approval. Okay. Where's that money coming from? Well, from Johnson? Uh, that will come out of the parking okay. rainy so day fund. All right. Well, this has been known for quite some time. This isn't something that's we no have offense to you, but kind of being slipped. No, not, not we have you, been we have been working with the contractor who's doing the work on the hotel, probably for the last eight months or so, saying, "Guys, we need to do this work. We need you to get me a price. I need you to get me a price. I need you to get me." And they have, in their defense, they have been concentrating on getting the hotel done. And now we're in the home stretch of the hotel, and they turned around and came back and said, okay, this is our expectation of what it's going to take to fix the skywalk. So we took the quote, went over, did a physical inspection on the on the skywalk ourselves, and went, yep, they're right. So what it's going to cost. So we agree with the costs, and we agree it's, it's our responsibility. It's just these fit and finish things are the last things oh, to sure. get done. So it goes from the Pine Street ramp. Correct. Parking there is an alley that runs between the edge of the Pine Street ramp and the mm -hmm. hotel. And if you look up, there's a skywalk there. Yeah. So, so it's only about 12 feet long. Yeah. 14 feet. Does this proposal for the funding also include the quick claim deed for? Nope. That's something we're so negotiating anyway. We, this is something we're responsible for as part of the developer's agreement. Move to approve. Motion by Jensen to approve. Second by Burnett. Under discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I'm going to be a nay. So it's two to one. Thirteen, consideration of possible action on the request of the Department of Public Works to approve amendment, is that a nine? Nine. Yes. Of the Brown County Municipal Recycling Agreement, Director Grenier. This is, uh, we entered into an agreement nine years, or ten years ago, so this is amendment number nine. We had the base agreement, nine amendments since, uh, whereby we designate Brown County to act as our agent, become the responsible unit of government uh, for recycling, and then we get whatever revenues or costs come along with that. Uh, been a very beneficial, mutually beneficial agreement. Uh, worked very well for both parties, so we recommend approval. Okay. Questions, concerns? If not, entertain a motion. Move to approve. Motion second. to approve by Burnett, second by Johnson. Under discussion? Hear none, all in favor? Aye. Nays, motion carried. Uh, 14. Consideration of possible action and request of the Department of Public Works to enter an agreement for professional services for the Nitschke Bridge Hydraulic Pump Replacement Design in the amount of $68,732.36. Grenier. 
Okay, we have uh, the way the bridge works, it's a electrohydraulic design. So electric motors drive hydraulic pumps. There's some rather large hydraulic sumps uh, in the bridge and the hydraulics actually operate the lift gear as well as there's hydraulic brakes uh, that control the bridge on its, uh, on its descent. The hydraulic system has been largely in operation and functional since 1998 when that bridge was constructed and that, that bridge, we own that, but the maintenance, we're reimbursed for maintenance by the state of Wisconsin because it goes across a, uh, a navigable waterway on a commercial port on a state trunk highway. So it's a little bit of an odd duck. Um, I'll be honest with you, when we got that bridge in 98, we really didn't get a whole lot of training on what we should be doing, so we've been doing the annual greasing and taking care of the lock pins and things like that. But the hydraulic system itself, we didn't have any experience with and we didn't get a lot of good instruction. So last year, John Miller and our Special Projects Division started doing some investigation and found out that we should have been doing some routine maintenance and upkeep on the hydraulics system. So we drained all the oil, did a scrub of the hydraulic system, found out that after operating the thing for 20 years and really not maintaining it, we've gotten very, very lucky. Um, we could have had some bad failures on the hydraulics and we just didn't. So um, we did a lot of cleaning, uh, got some things taken care of, and the consultant has told us that we've got some pumps and hydraulic motors that are past their useful life. Um, some of the control systems in there, it's a 20 year old bridge, it's time for these things to start going out. It's no different than, you know, you get 15 years on a car and you gotta put brakes into it. Okay, so we're not building a new bridge at the tune of $30 million, but we do have to replace the hydraulic system to the mm -hmm. tune of a half million dollars kind of thing. Any questions or concerns? So what we're doing is we're engaging the services of AECOM, which is a large uh, multinational engineering firm, on an office here in Green Bay, that's the old STS consultants, uh, who have experience in designing these systems because our staff doesn't. Okay. Any questions or concerns? Signed. Budgeted. Alderman Burnett. Yes. This budget is part of it. Okay. Move to approve. Motion to approve by Burnett. Second, Second. by Johnson. Under discussion? Aye. Here and here and none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nays. Motion carried. 15. Consideration of possible action whether a sanitary sewer credit refund should be granted at 2355 Eastman Ave. Director Gunnar. Uh, we have a situation where the resident at 2355. Eastman Avenue uh, discovered that he had a large usage on his clear water meter. Um, typically what had happened, and we, we don't do this very often anymore, but back uh, years ago, folks who had a need for, you know, folks who did lawn irrigation or if you have a large swimming pool, they used to put a deduct meter in or, or a clear water meter. And this resident went back and started looking and saying, you know, God, I got a lot of usage on my clear water meter. Turns out both the clear water meter and his regular water meter, he was being charged both water and sewer on both meters. So we actually were double dipping him uh, for quite some time. Uh, it appears this goes back many years. However, statutes limit this to a six year recovery period. Um, we feel justified in reimbursing from the sanitary sewer fund uh, this individual uh, for the last six years. At the price of? Uh, that's what I'm looking for here. I can't remember what it was. What's that? Like 2200 mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, $2,025.64. Yeah. So okay. thank God it was on the Clearwater meter. Yep. Okay, any questions or concerns? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alderman Johnson. Second by? Second. Burnett, under discussion. Hear none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. 16, consideration of possible action on the report of a purchase, purchasing manager to contract with rotating equipment repair for the repair of two pumps at Harvey Street, storm sewer lift station for 74,514. Director Kinnear. Uh, again, we have two pumps at our Harvey Street storm yep. lift station. Yep. 
Harvey Street's lift station that do need repair. Uh, RER is uh, is the contractor who RER does um, a lot of our storm pump, and I think we may have talked about this at a previous meeting. Um, very few repair companies can cross over multiple pump manufacturers based on the pumps that we have. RER is a uh, licensed distributor for those pumps and actually came up with a lower cost than the pump manufacturer itself. So we have been sole sourcing a lot of our, our pumps back to RER. Uh, what they have is uh, they gave, gave us back quote $74,514. However, we also need $2,700 for the shipping of the motors to and from uh, RER. So the actual cost should show up as $77,214. Now the storm sewer lift station, it helps with flooding? Yes. Okay. Any, any time that we have uh, storm water, this helps lift that up and get it to an elevation right. where we can discharge it to a surface water body. How can we get one over on Schwartz and Mason Street? Because <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the designated areas when you had that map about two years ago. Right, we're working our way through it. Right okay. now we were doing uh, the project that's been going on all summer on Elizabeth. I guess where is Schwartz on the list? That I would have to check with, uh, with Matt Hackenlein a lot. Okay. All right, any other concerns or questions? Motion to approve. Motion to approve Second. by Johnson. Second by Burnett. Under discussion. You're none all in favor. Aye. Aye. Motion carried. 17. Da, da, da. Consideration of possible action on a request by Wisconsin Public Service Corporation for an easement across city owned parcel 7 741 1 for the North Webster Avenue project. Director Gunnar. Uh, what we have is a very small sliver of land that's uh, on North Webster, immediately north of where the East River crosses underneath. Uh, so that would be up by the... Where East Carmel Station is. That's up by uh, the right. AFG clinic. New clinic yeah. American Foods Group put that new clinic in. Right. Uh, so we got that lift, lift station up there. Uh, and Wisconsin Public Service is part of their utility improvements associated with the North Webster Corridor. Uh, need to, they're looking for a 12 foot wide utility easement across the property. 12 foot is a customary to have as a utility easement in the front yard uh, of any property. So the staff supports this and recommends approval. Okay, hey, questions or concerns? Second. Second. Oh, Johnson, did you make a motion? I did, yeah. sir. All right, motion to approve by Johnson, second by Burnett. Under discussion here, none all in favor. Nice right. motion carried. Okay, number 18, I'm just going to read it out as report of actions taken by Department of Public Works. And, this and if anybody has any questions, just please speak up. Everybody okay with all of it? Okay. Okay. Maybe one, maybe one question. Sure. Yep. Uh, how, many, how many more properties do we have left to acquire over there? Uh, full acquisitions. That's all that's left? Yeah, for okay. the full acquisitions. Now we've right. also, we probably have another 15 or so of the small strip takes or property corners on vision corners or TLEs or things like that. Okay. So we're close. We're doing very well on it. Good. In fact, the contract for taking down the first group of nine is going out the door well today. Today? Well, that has to be this fall? For the first time today. All 24 houses will be on the ground by March. Okay. So that's going to go on. We're going to keep there. doing that through the winter. All right. Yeah. That's a demolition. Move to accept. Motion to receive and place on file by Johnson. Second by second. Burnett. Under discussion? You're not all in favor? Nays, motion Aye. carried. Director's report, Director Grenier. Okay, just a couple of things for you tonight. Uh, first of which is the real estate, real estate acquisition on Webster is progressing very nicely. And I was going to give you the numbers, but we just did that. Mm -hmm. uh, we are in our 
third or third bulk collection uh, for the year. Uh, this is also an overflow week, so if your constituents are asking, this is the week to do it. Snowplow Rodeo, City of Green Bay will host the annual American Public Works Association Snowplow Rodeo this Thursday at uh, the parking lot at Lambeau Field. Uh, we're hoping for a repeat of last year when one of our staff actually won the statewide competition, then went on to participate in the national competition in Loveland, Colorado. So uh, it's a lot of fun if you get a chance to come out and, and take a peek at things Thursday morning to watch the guys going through the paces. It's, uh, it's pretty interesting. There's a there's a written exam that's involved, and there's a the the truck uh, the, there's a truck that has ten things wrong with it. A, we call it disabled vehicle test. And on your pre-trip inspection, uh, the driver should be able to diagnose any of the, you know, all ten of the things that are wrong and, and make the correct or at least identify what corrective action needs to be taken. And then there's a physical obstacle course that the drivers have to drive on, and it is timed. So. Uh, Last year, last couple of years, we've had about 140 participants from across the state uh, go through the, the full exercise uh, and compete in the rodeo, so a lot of fun. And then the last item I have for you tonight is relative to Gray Street, which Alderman Burnett had brought up. Um, there's just a lot of confusion statewide. We don't, we don't exactly understand what it means, which is why the questions. Um, the state... There's federal money that comes in from Federal Highway Administration through the Surface Development or Surface Transportation Block Grant (SDBG) program, and those funds pay for projects like Webster Avenue and Mather Street and Gray Street. And it used to be funded on a five-year cycle, and Brown County's MPO or Municipal Planning Organization. We are an entitlement MPO, one of five, I think, uh, entitlement MPOs in the state. So we have a set funding distribution, and that comes on a five-year cycle. So about three and a half million dollars, give or take seventeen and a half million dollars for the five-year funding cycle. They informed us in June that it was only a four-year funding cycle looking forward, and there just seems to be some mass confusion between the DOT and the MPO over exactly what that means, but we were anticipating a funding availability of this much money, and in reality there's only, there's three and a half million dollars less than what we had anticipated, uh, so the MPO had to make some adjustments, and there were three projects that were potentially impacted, one uh, in Ashwaubenon, one in Bellevue, and Gray Street and Green Bay. Not because it's in Green Bay, <coughs> but because of how the timing on various components of the project worked, there was no way to meet the deadlines that are imposed by the DOT and keep Gray moving forward with the move from a four-year or five-year cycle to a four-year cycle. So the federal funding on Gray is no longer there. We're still going forward with the project. It's simply going to be a locally funded project instead of the federal funding. And one of the things that I have said, and this is not any disrespect to the Wisconsin Department of Transportation. The way the DOT projects go, especially when you're doing a local project like a Webster or a Gray or a Mather, they have their facilities development manual. And the FDM is a wonderful tool if you're doing high speed rural. But when you get into low speed urban settings, some of the reports that you have to do and the reporting requirements and all the hoops you have to jump through, it gets really, really onerous for us to do that. Which is why we hire consultants and the overall project cost is significantly higher than what we'd pay to do the same project if it was a locally led project. But with that much federal funding coming in, sometimes you're willing to bite that bullet and go through all the, jump through the hoops to get the federal money. If the federal money's not there, we're going to take the project back and we're going to do it our way, and we will likely, very likely, okay, I'm very confident, we're going to be able to do it at substantially less cost, overall cost, total cost of the project. Uh, than what the fe uh, states would be able to do with the federal funding. As a result of that, because we still have a local funding cost share associated with the project when it was federally funded, and the federal funding is capped, okay? We did those cost estimates qualified for the funding back in 2014. <coughs> those funds do not index with respect to inflation. So you're doing your best guess five years prior, actually in this case it would have been seven years prior, uh, the project was not due to be constructed until 2021. 
there's a very good possibility it happened on almost every project we've we've done with the state so far um, that once we actually get to construction the total dollar value that we're responsible the total dollar value of the contract exceeds what we had anticipated when we entered into the agreement and because the federal funds are capped we pick up hundred percent of that excess so our cost winds up being much more than the 20 percent that we anticipate going in the overall effect of the taxpayer is not going to be an 80 percent increase in cost we think we're probably going to come out closer to what we'd have paid under the state contract anyway but sure. uh it's just information there's really nothing we can do the goal line changed i guess is the best way to look at it you know, it's a five it's a four-year program instead of a five-year program but when we looked at everything we just we couldn't meet the the program requirements the wba why their report made it seem the money just disappeared as if it was diverted somewhere else. Well, and what I, I worked with, with that reporter pretty extensively to make sure that we got an accurate report. And at the time that the report ran, or at the time that we did the the interview last Thursday, there were a lot of an, unanswered questions. And I think if, if you go back and relook at that interview, that's exactly what I'm saying is we don't know what this means. Somebody please explain it to us. They simply said, here's the funding that was there and here's the funding that there is now. And there, there was one year's worth of funding that's not there. So we're asking, where'd the money go? If it was here last year and it's not here now, what happened? What we're hearing from the state is we're dealing with a planning cycle. So there's not actual money, it's anticipated money, okay? And if you're anticipating money five years out, and now you're only anticipating money four years out, well, yeah, there's a year gap in there. If it was that, if it was that cut and dried, we just we wish the state would have told us that. It, it would have saved a lot of confusion. Well, you know, the public's looking for scams. Absolutely. So I think that unfortunately, really? the way you explained it was perfect. <laughs> I mean, well, that, that's the best information I have at this time, based on what I'm hearing from the state today. Yeah. You know, again, go back to last Thursday, and that's all we were asking for is help us understand what happened. All you told us was. Last year in October there was this much money, and this year in June there's this much money. And okay, there's forty three and a half million dollars locally, forty six million dollars across the state. Where'd it go? It didn't go anywhere. Money never existed. It was on paper. In a motion to receive and place on file. So moved. by Burnett, second, second. by Johnson. Our discussion here. None. All in favor? Nays. Motion carried. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. second by Johnson. Second by Burnett. Under discussion here. None. All in favor? Nays. Motion carried. I see you going back to your Wednesday meeting. Sounds like it. Yeah. I do have a concern that 